Hi guys, this is Nimisha from Team Zion and welcome to Web3 School. Today we have reached the section 3 of this series. And as you know, in the previous section, we built our base by understanding how the blockchain works. While in this section, we will explore the exciting opportunities that the blockchain opens up, like the NFTs and the metaverse. So let's start with NFTs. If you do a simple Google search, it would reveal that NFT stand for the non-fungible token. They're these unique digital assets stored on the blockchain. NFTs may include digital art, music, or video. But what does fungible really mean? So fungible means anything that can be interchanged is called fungible. Take our currency notes for example. They are fungible because I can exchange my 2000 rupee note with some other 2000 rupee note without a change in value. They're both essentially the same. Similarly, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana are fungible. Your 10 Bitcoin is the same as my 10 Bitcoin. While NFTs on the other hand aren't like that. Every NFT is a unique asset with its own value, exactly like artwork. So if I ever own a Mona Lisa, the original one, that would be its one and only piece. I, can, I cannot go and exchange it with another Mona Lisa painted by some other painter, for example. So this is what non-fungible means. And NFTs also allow for more such unique properties. They give you the actual ownership of an asset independent of any institute or even the government. Unlike a fiat currency's value, which relies on whether or not a sovereign will back it up, exactly like physical artwork, the value of NFT completely relies on its demand. So as long as there's a demand for an asset, no one can devalue it. NFTs also cannot be counterfeited. While they often come across cases of counterfeit currency notes, NFT ownership records are stored on the blockchain that have a cryptographic public key and hence cannot be counterfeited. Also, NFTs have proven ownership. One can prove that they own an NFT. They can easily see that their public key holds a particular NFT and this documentation is also held on the blockchain. But what do you do with an NFT? So if you're an artist, you can mint your artwork as an NFT, list it on the marketplace and sell it. But why would people buy it? People would buy it for the exact same reasons as to why they buy physical paintings for millions of dollars. Also, if an NFT holds brand value, like CryptoPunks or Bored Ape Yacht Club, the owner can flex it to the world by putting it as their profile picture on the various social media platforms. This brings a sense of pride and a sense of community among the people who own this artwork from the same collection. So if you see a Bored Ape person and you're also a Bored Ape person, you'd be like, hey, I know you already. So most NFT projects today are profile picture collections. But is that all they're ever going to be? Generally, people buy NFTs for utilities or as a status symbol to flex that they own something valuable or for a sense of community with people who share similar interests. But the technology allows for other exciting utilities like the play to earn games, shopping in the metaverse, having your own avatar in the metaverse, etc. And there are various IRL events like concerts, meetups, etc. where tickets for the event are in the form of NFTs. The recent Jordar event that we held is another such example of an NFT ticketed event. And as discussed earlier by Tanya, Web3 will enable you to actually own your gaming assets. In the metaverse, NFTs can be your clothes, gadget, accessories or cars. We will discuss more about the metaverse in the upcoming videos. But before that, in the following video, you will learn where you can buy and sell NFTs 